It's like Up, but a really creepy version of Up. Hey guys and welcome back to your daily dose of Zelda TOTK. Today's episode is a special featuring some of the best Sonai builds we've seen so far. Let's get into it. What this vehicle lacks in practicality, it makes up for in style. Mizda is using wheels either side of a steering stick, with springs attached, and that makes for a rather unique way of travelling. Just don't attempt to use it on stealth missions. This thing is loud. This is a pack of three deployable combat bots. Anya gets the pack closer to the bad guys using Ultra Hand. He's also found a really cool use for a fairly useless device. This right here is a time bomb. The smart part about this build is that the explosion from the time bomb activates the zone eye on the three robots. If you learn to make one transport device in TOTK, learn to make this. This can be used for discovering shrines, exploring the depths and for ubering Koroks around. It's extremely cheap to build. All you need is a steering rack and two fans. Pay close attention to how Bravest has angled the parts for maximum performance. T-Wolf captioned this clip, Robot Walking Test Failure. I don't think this is a fail at all. He's built a frog. Trickster GG's is attempting to make a flying saucer, and I'd say he's succeeded. He's using four wings to create a circular base, and then he's using sleds to create a domed house for the pilot. Rockets get him up into the sky, then the fans underneath the wings take over the propulsion. Cool build. Faze Poopinfartin69, classic name, has accidentally built the divine beast Va Mado. Image reference in the top right if you want to rejog your memory. Link's Pause has created a vehicle designed specifically for traversing the depths. Let's break it down. So here's the clever part. One of the recent breakthroughs over the past few days is using springs as suspension. Link's Pause can effectively toggle the suspension by stepping off and back on the steering stick.
Other methods for exploring the depths include whatever the hell this contraption is. I count 12 wheels in total, all at slightly different heights which creates the upwards motion required to traverse over uneven terrain. Actually genius. Alfredo the Impasta has sent us his new mech design. It's called the Advanced Combat Mech Build and this thing is super impressive. The mirror shield on the back serves no functional purpose, but it does give it Iron Man vibes. I think that's acceptable. When you're building Zondai contraptions, or anything for that matter, slope surfaces can be a real pain in the butt. Here's a good tip for you. Save a workbench platform made of a stake and some large wood panels to your auto build. You can then use Ultra Hand to adjust the height of the platform. Pretty smart. Poop and Farton calls this the shower head. He's using a homing cart with a stabilizer on top and then 18 beam emitters attached to a construct head. Blank Slate calls this contraption the spinning top of death. Let's see what it can do. Time to send it into a bow cobbling camp. It's giving me Beyblade vibes. Wait, what if we made two and made them fight each other? <laughs> Bleeding Painpo blames growing up in redneck culture for the inspiration here. This is the most trucker song I could find, so please don't be offended. Stepping off the steering stick and back on it activates the spring-based suspension, so we can do this. We've seen some hyper-efficient vehicles in these videos, but now it's time for some hyper-inefficient vehicles. This is the Boingotron 3000. This is a cardboard cutout of President Hudson. Players are picking this guy up and doing some interesting things with him. He can even be glued to Zonai parts and used in builds, such as this President Hudson mech. Is it a boat? Is it a land vehicle? Is it General Grievous's wheel? It's all three. After millions of years, it swims again. Yesterday we covered Sorinia's hyper-efficient one-fan flying vehicle, but it had some problems with stability. Well, he's been hard at work and this is his much improved design. The only two components are the downwards facing fan and the steering stick.
The rear of the vehicle is constructed using a Korok frond, which has virtually no weight, supporting a spear with fronds either side. Balance and steering is now greatly improved, and this thing hardly uses any power. Tactful Honk calls this the Multi-Spinner Mark 1, and you'll quickly learn how this contraption got its name. The homing car has a single hydrant, flame, frost and shock emitter, making it perfect for any occasion. Now the cool thing about this build, at least in my opinion, is that it doesn't use a stabiliser. It relies on centrifugal force alone to stay upright. But what if the enemy is immune to projectiles or elemental damage? Well, Tactful Honk has thought of that. That's what the spikes are for. The spinning mechanism is a motor stolen from the Gemimix Shrine, and it's powered by a shock emitter instead of the Zonai battery directly. To get it out of the shrine, fuse it with something, then pay the NPC at Tarrytown 20 rupees to split the items. The whole thing costs 33 Zonai to build, and it's surprisingly durable. Yukino-san has built a handy device for torturing bad guys. What's even more sinister is that he's included a viewing platform within the design. Just listen to those screams. And if you're a fan of Star Wars, you'll agree. This build was inspired by Anakin Skywalker's pod racer in Episode 1 The Phantom Menace. The design is actually fairly simple. It uses two wheels up front for steering and two fans on each pod. A 45 degree fan under the steering stick to the rear provides lift and forward momentum. It's fairly manoeuvrable, works well on water and it costs 30 zonite without materials. Now this is pod racing. Now, Nicholas Live has sent us his build. Bonus points for the desert setting, which really gives off Tatooine vibes. He's opted for a triple fan and two rocket combo for each of the engines, and a wheel to get this thing off the ground. The base is a wing and steering stick combo, which does mean eventually the wing will break, but it does look cool. We're now reaching a level of intelligence I'll never get to in game, or real life. T-Wolf was tired of falling from his vehicles, so he built a two-axis gimbal. Here's where it gets really crazy. No matter what the vehicle does, Link does not fall out of it. Cause you know, physics. A close contender for build of the day was Ultra Baboon's tank with functional hatch. When the device is activated, the spring closes Link into the driver's pod. With Link now secured, he's free to terrorise Hyrule without the fear of getting hit. <laughs> Screw building your house in Tarrytown. Build a mobile home instead. Disclaimer, Korok companion not included. Does this machine look dumb? Yes. Does it also do a surprising amount of damage? Yes.
In case you missed that, look at the damage a couple of wax does on a Hinox. One of the most popular modes of transport is the steering stick with two fans, otherwise known as the hover bike. We've covered that a bunch on this channel. If you fancy mixing things up and spending an extra two fans, the basket actually makes for an interesting base. The steering stick sits towards the front of the basket and four angled fans provide the propulsion. The top bit is even good for transporting Koroks around. T-Wolf's on a roll with vehicle designs, and this one is powered by pure hatred and spite. What it lacks in movement, it makes up for in smashing enemies. Here it is, punishing a Hinox. <laughs> Keeping on with the Star Wars theme, Natural 2 has built himself a TIE Fighter. Boxy Boxy has designed what is, in my opinion, one of the best truck designs we've seen to date. And this couldn't have come at a better time, as I found better trucking music. It's not much, but it's honest work. <laughs> Keeping on with the farming theme, Eisdrak has built a tractor, although this harvest does not look very bountiful. The spinning blade underneath the tractor actually does harvest the rice. Uran 120 has built this death bike that moves towards enemies using homing carts at the base of the vehicle. Although, in retrospect, a stabilizer might have prevented Tulin from catching this stray. <laughs> OP's son created a solid attempt at a walker, and honestly, this gives me so much hope for a functional ATAT. The machine is called Gunter, by the way, and I think he suits it. Remember T-Wolf's two-axis gimbal from last episode? Well, one of the most popular comments was, now put it on an aircraft. T-Wolf has done just that. This means you can do full-on backflips in your aircraft without Link falling from the steering stick. The Korok space program continues to progress in its mission to one day put Koroks on the blood moon. Ah! 
Speaking of rockets, this could revolutionize Korok space travel as we know it. This is RAF's proof of concept multi stage booster. Cecil likes walking in his stupid little boots and then doing a stupid little dance. We love Cecil. Wait, actually, did Schmidt just accidentally create an ATST without any weapons? I think he did. You've seen players build suspension systems using springs, but what Rugrus has built is a springless suspension system. Kaol made this working flower bomb cannon. First, he loads up about 10 flower bombs into this chamber. Then, using the steering stick, he activates a spring at the bottom of the chamber. Classic Speed stole this giant ball from a shrine by fusing it and then unfusing it via the Goron in Tarrytown. The steering stick spins the wheels either side of the ball. As the giant ball is attached to those wheels, it too spins. The large ball is the main contact point with the ground but the arms of the vehicle act like stabilizers. This is just genius design. The ground troops are advancing and Gale has opted to provide air support. I'm 99% sure this is not what the developers pictured when they saw players completing this mission. GameSpection likes his Obliterator Tron 9000 so much, he's made an edit. So we're all missing Rivali's Gale, right? But what if I told you there was a cheap solution to get height with Zonai? You're in luck. New Gas has a rocket glued to a sled saved in his auto build so we can quickly do this. And it only cost 6 Zonite. Ultimate Lock is loving the new Tears of the Wind Waker DLC. God, that music. So much nostalgia. If we gave daily awards for the most ludicrous, most impractical vehicles, Meme Lover 6's unicycle would take today's. Hands down. Time to check in with the engineers over at the Korok space program. Marty has built a four-stage rocket by placing rockets underneath hover stones. Ignition.
Great work, engineer. And we've had a further breakthrough in the Hoverstone department. The hoverstone floats in the air, naturally. Activating the steering stick causes the spring to push the hoverstone upwards. Repeating this creates near infinite upwards propulsion. Alfredo the Impasta has created the ultimate tank design. Link enters via the rear of the tank which is being held open via a spring. Now watch what happens when Link enters the steering stick. With the rear door now closed, it's virtually impossible for the enemies to damage Alfredo. Let the destruction begin. The tank features a mounted cannon on the top but also a dual beam emitter set up on the rear of the tank adding to its firepower. If you watch these videos often, you know that farming equipment has a special place in my heart. This is Scrago Tape Shop's Wheat Collection Machine. His design uses two swords mounted to a horizontally turning wheel on the underside of the vehicle that cuts the grass. No collection system as of yet, so Scrag has to follow behind to collect the loot. I'll be watching this project with great interest. No, your eyes are not deceiving you, that is Metal Gear Rex brought to life in Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. The build is by Yuran120 on Twitter and it comes complete with a functional anti-aircraft cannon. The anti-aircraft cannon has also been electrified which makes it look way cooler. Genuinely one of the most impressive builds we've seen today. What a talented guy. Did anybody else have one of these RC cars that could flip over as a kid? Bilson has created his own version in Tears of the Kingdom. The steering stick is mounted on four wheels that has a stabilizer on top. This ensures the section that Link stands on always remains upright. The two arms holding the wheels are able to spin freely on the axis. The result is this incredible all-terrain vehicle that is virtually impossible for Link to fall off. This is some advanced Korok torture, and frankly, I'm impressed. Deep GG has built a spring-based cannon system to launch Koroks into the chasm. The Koroks are stored in this holding pen and then drop down into the firing chamber. From there, well, you guessed it. Using the steering stick powers the door on the holding pen and refills the firing chamber with victims. I meant Korox. Korox. <laughs> Dusk was inspired by the Sandbender's vehicles from Avatar when he created this.
So there's a theme of task failed successfully clips in TOTK, and here's Angus Cable Jr.'s contribution. These walls can't be climbed. So Zunji built an elevator. Smart use of the small wheels. This takes today's wholesome build of the day. This is Matteo's stable dog washer and dryer. Hydrants provide the washing, of course. Now for a quick dry with a couple of angled fans. But if you want to avoid the nightmare fuel that is gloom hands, you're going to want to pay attention. This rotating fire and ice barrier makes light work of these pesky critters. So small spoiler warning for the Mukhtarok boss fight incoming. This handy contraption uses a spinning wheel with hydrants attached placed on top of a homing cart. It's a cheap but effective tool to bring into your fight. As he hates water, the machine will hurt him quite a lot and it will also clear up any sludge on its way. Move over, Epona. There's a new and more graceful steed in town. Somebody put it out of its misery. Clear Flat calls this the spiked wheel. The wheel itself is made up of sleds with spikes attached. Link stands on a stabilised steering stick next to a wheel that rotates the outer wheel. It might not be the fastest, most practical or the most lethal, but my god it looks cool. Clearflat's not the only player making great use out of sleds. This is Classic Speed's amphibious contraption. Bully's 8-beam emitter fighter craft is so lethal, it will not share the sky with anything else. Could this take on a dragon? We may need a follow-up. Avery Babry has built a weapon to surpass Metal Gear. This is also the closest I think I've seen anybody get to an ATST. Impressive. Thanks so much for watching guys, don't forget to hit subscribe if you're new and we'll see you tomorrow for another video.